So I can repeat, Tuesday morning to everyone, class, and welcome to our Practical Research One class for this week. I am your teacher, Ms. Lavi Claire Eitado, and we are still in our discussion on review of related literature. Now, for today's for today's session, this week's session will be focusing on citing related literature. And I hope that you are excited to learn about this topic. And as we commence today's session, shall we all bow down our heads, let us pray, and seek the Lord's guidance for today's session. Shall we all bow down our heads? Dear Lord and Father of all, thank you for today. We are grateful for the ways in which you provide for our needs. We recognize that you are the source of all good things. Help us to focus our hearts and minds now on what we are about to learn. Inspire us as we listen and write. Guide us by your eternal light as we discover more about the world around us. We ask for peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. So once again, a pleasant morning to everyone. I hope that you are all well rested and that you are all ready for today's discussion. So let me share with you what's in store for us by showing the most essential learning competency for our discussion and that is to cite related literature using standard style and our objectives for today's discussion are the following. First is to apply rules in citing sources using APA and MLA citation and the second one Second one is to employ appropriate reporting verbs in citing literature. Of course, we do not want to overuse the word said, mentioned, noted in, uh, in our review of related literature. So let me help you in learning okay, what these reporting verbs that we can use when we write our own researches. Now, to jumpstart our discussion, let's have our first activity, which we will call, Who Said What? Okay, so who said what? The activity is very simple. The objective is for you to identify the person, the author, who said the following famous lines. So again, I will be flashing famous lines from people, from different authors. So what I would like you to do is to correctly identify who said the following lines. Now if you know the answer, just tell me the letter of your answer. All right, so let's have our first line. It says, all the world's stage and all the men and women merely players. Who said this line? Is it A, was it A, Mary Shelley, B, William Shakespeare, C, Jane Austen, or D, Mark Twain. I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Tell me your answers. D. All right. So the correct answer is B. This is William Shakespeare. This is from the poem of William Shakespeare, a popular poem by William Shakespeare. Uh, titled Seven Ages of Fact. So if you, in your grade 9 English, you were taught this poem. I, and, and I know that, okay? Number two, who said this line? What is essential is invisible to the eye. <laughs> who said this? Was it A, Anne Frank? Is it B, Robert Frost? Was it C, Francis Bacon? Or D, Antoine de Saint-Exupéry? Who said five, four, three, two, one? Answers, please. D. D, right. So very good. Pass. The correct answer is D. Antoine de Saint Exupery. So this is <laughs> this is uh, from the famous novel of this French author Antoine de Saint Exupery, titled The Little Prince. Okay, so, so if you have time, you, you can uh, you can read this very uh, interesting po uh, novel rather by uh, this author. Okay, number three, do not do unto others what you do not want others to do unto you. Who said this? A. Confucius. B. Lao Tzu. San Tzu or Mencius. Five, four, three, two, one. Who said it? Yay! Very good. 
plus. So the correct answer is A. So that is from Confucius. And this is uh, this one is popularly known as what? The golden rule. Very good, Arnie. So the correct answer is Confucius. Last one. Okay, let's have this line. Education is the most powerful weapon you can use to change the world. Who said it? Is it A, George Washington, B, Franklin Roosevelt, C, Nelson Mandela, or D, Winston Churchill? Class? Okay, very good class. So the correct answer is letter C, Nelson Mandela. Okay, now. My, my question is, uh, ma'am, why did we begin our class with, with this activity? When we do review of related literature and studies, it is important to know that we cannot do it. It's impossible to do it without having to cite sources from other people. Am I right? Yes! yes. <laughs> now, in doing so, in doing so, it's not just enough that we get this information from them, but equally important to that is that we are able to give credit to the sources of our information. So therefore, okay, let us answer the following questions. And I would like to to know, I would like to, um, you know, for you to explain your answer to the following questions. First, why is it important to correctly cite sources? Yes, uh, Bani, why is it important to correctly cite our sources? To make it a more scholarly work. Absolutely, perfect answer. Okay, so right, doing research paper requires scholarly work, and this is one of it. Now, my second question is: How does citing sources accurately help increase the credibility of a research? Uh, may I hear from Pass? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> How do citing source, sources accurately help increase the credibility of a research? How does citing resources? Ah, okay. That's it now. <laughs> right. Very good. Very good pass. Right? So when we do research, it is important that we we give, okay, we give proper citation. We we tell people that this is not from me. I got it from other from another source, and I give credit to that source. Okay? And that increases your credibility, uh, not only of the research, but you as the researcher as well. Okay, so we have been repeatedly saying the word citation, okay? Again and again. So once and for all, let us define what the word citation means. Very good, Ruby. So when we say citation, it means giving credit to sources of information. So that is the basic meaning of the word um, citation. Now, when we write our review of related literature, there are certain styles we can use for our citation. And for, for this particular session, since we don't have all the time in the world, we will just be talking about two. Okay, two major citation styles. Any idea about these citation APA styles? APA. Yes, yes, Bani. APA and the APA. APA. Very good, fantastic job, class. Okay, so we have APA and we have MLA. So again, this is APA, not APA, not the one used for ice cream, but this is APA, which stands for American Psychological Association, and MLA stands for Modern Language Association. Now, for each style in our citation, there are specific rules that we follow for each of these citation styles. Another term for style is format. So for each format that you use for your citation, it has to be, of course, consistent from beginning to the end, and you must also adhere to the rules in citing our sources. Are we clear on that, class? Yes. Okay, very good. Now, let's talk about APA citation first. So what are the key characteristics of APA citation? So one, it is common with social science discipline. And the second one is that it follows the author date system of citation. So when we say author, do we mean the full name of the author? When we say date, do we mean the month, the date, and the year? The year. The year. 
Okay, so let's do, let's find out. Okay, let's find out if your answers are correct. Okay, so if we are going to follow APA style and we're going to cite a work by a single author, how do we cite that particular source? So we we include the last name. So when we say sure. name and date, we don't mean the full name of the author, but only his or her last name and the year. Not the month, not the date, and the year, but the year only. Just like in this example. So if you're doing this, then you're doing it correctly. So you see here, Cyprus is the last name of the author and the year of publication, which is 2014. Now, if you want to enclose the, the source in parentheses, then this is how it's done. Yes, ma'am. What's the difference in the first in the first one and the other one. Okay, so this one is called parenthetical citation, and the, the first one is called non-parenthetical citation. Why? Simply because this is enclosed in parentheses. Alright, so these are variations on how you can cite your sources. Okay, so let's proceed. Now, if we have work by two authors, what do we do? Okay, we name both authors in the signal phrase or in the parenthesis each time you cite the work. So, for this first time, second time, third time, you cite both of them. For example, we have Santos and Reyes. So, that's how it's done. And then, if you do it in parenthetical style, that's how you do it. Okay? Okay, so next, we have work by three to five authors. So, there is, um, there is uh, one thing that we have to remember when we cite authors uh, or three to five authors, okay? So first, we cite all of them the first time. So we have three authors here, David Garcia and Isabella, 2014, or if you want to do it parenthetically, that's how it's done. However, however class, and the subsequent citations, meaning the second time, the third time, the fourth time, you mention these offers, you will replace the second and third offer with the phrase et al. The word, the phrase et al means and others. So the second time you will mention them, you will replace Garcia and Isabella with et al. Okay, so that's how we do it. And then there are also instances when we have unknown offers. So how do we cite unknown offers, okay? So one is, okay, so we, <laughs> we cite source in the title, in the signal phrase, or the first words, or two in the parenthesis, and then <laughs> titles of books and reports are italicized or underlined, titles of articles, chapters, web pages, or quotation marks. So this is how you do it. So this is the title using EPA, so you enclose it in parenthesis plus the year. This is if you do not know the author, right? Now, there are also instances when we have organizations as an author. No uh, particular person claims to be the author, but it was written by an organization, so how do we do it? So if the author is an organization or a government agency, mention the organization in the signal phrase, or in the parenthetical citation the first time we cite the source. So according to the National Institute of Chemistry 2013, the first time. So you have to mention the full name, but in the second citation you may use the acronym. So NIC means National Institute of Chemistry. Alright. So questions so far about APA? <laughs> Very good. So let's talk about MLA. Okay, this is the second um, citation style we're going to use. Now, what makes um, MLA different from APA is that it follows the author page method of index citation. So in APA, we follow author, Sorry. author, date, style of citation, but for MLA, we follow author page method. Okay? So instead of the author's surname and year of publication, this style uses the author's last name still and page number or numbers from which the quotation or paraphrase in the citation was lifted. So here are some examples. So if the author's name is in the text, so Palomar emphasized that and that those are the page numbers instead of the year. Okay, if it's in parentheses, it's the same thing. Okay, if we have multiple authors, uh, let's say two authors, so Abila and Santos, 
So the, the year was replaced by 9. 9 there is the page number. Okay, and if you notice, the word end, okay, in APA, you use the ampersand for parenthesis, but in MLA, you don't use the symbol of the ampersand, but the word still. Okay, still the word end, not the symbol. Okay, and then also another example is this. Okay, if you have organization as an author, it's the same thing. Just replace the year with the page number or numbers. All right. So, after knowing how to cite our sources, it is equally important that we, again, we do not overly use a certain verb in citing our source. So, here, I am, in this point of our discussion, I'm going to talk about what are these verbs okay, that we can use to cite our sources. Now, these verbs may be used depending on your purpose. Okay, what is the message that you want to convey to your reader? So we have here verbs that are neutral. Okay, so what are these verbs? These are neutral reporting verbs. Now, why do you think are they called neutral reporting verbs? Are that very good? Because they do not express really agreement or disagreement towards something. It's merely stating something. Okay, so if that is your purpose, then you can use these neutral reporting verbs. Are we clear so far? Yes. 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 Next, we also have what we call tentative reporting verbs. Okay, now why are they called tentative reporting verbs? Because they show or they uh, they give you know a certain uncertainty about something. That's why they are called tentative reporting verbs. Now, there are also verbs which we can use to show strong agreement towards something. And those are what we call strong reporting verbs, positive, meaning you are expressing strong agreement towards something. And the opposite of this are strong reporting verbs on the negative side, meaning these are verbs that show strong disagreement towards a certain idea in your review of related literature and right. So I hope that these verbs will help you in coming up with your own review of related literature. So let's practice. Okay? So I have here some information and I would like you to cite these sources using APA and MLA citation format. I'll give you two minutes to do this. Okay, so for number one, okay, for number one, okay, right, so very good. So for APA style, this is how we can do it, okay, and then for the MLA style, non-parenthetically and parenthetically, non-parenthetically and parenthetically for APA and MLA. Let's have the next example, okay, very good. So this is how we can cite the source you see APA and MLA. All right. So I know <laughs> that you are excited for our quiz. It's very simple. Uh, you will just simply identify the citation style used in um, in each item. So what style did the author use? Did the author use APA citation and M or MLA citation? Right. Who got five? Wow, very good. <laughs> As I simply have a really good set of students this morning and I'm happy. Okay, now to wrap up our discussion this morning, let's answer this question. Okay, so what is the importance of citing related literature using standard style? Any idea from the class? Yes, very good. Okay, so it's important that we cite our related literature using standard side because it shows how scholarly we are in doing our review of related literature, and it also shows us how um, you know how good we are at keeping track of all our sources in our RRL. Okay, so um, any question from uh, from the class? Not. Okay, so if there are no more questions, then I would like to thank everyone. Yay. Yay. <laughs> Got